Bibles, to turn with me to the book of John, chapter 20. And uh, tonight we're going to do part two of Jesus in the midst. John chapter 20, verse 19. Then the same day and evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. Amen. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. Amen. You can be seated. As believers, we are aware that Jesus will never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. And those of us that have been saved by his grace, that are filled with the Holy Ghost, Jesus is our constant companion and he is our guide. And while we may not always be aware of the Lord's presence, he is always near us or near to us. Um, and the Bible, the Bible promises that the Lord will be near to those who are struggling in life's problems or dealing with pain associated with uh, circumstances of life. Psalms 34 and verse 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Now, throughout the Bible, there's a lot of scriptures, there's multiple passages of scripture where it is undeniable that the Lord was in the midst of his people and he was providing for their particular needs. And we understand that we're never alone in the journey. And as I thought about this and, um, about Jesus being that uh, ever-present help in the time of our need and time of trouble, this particular story I just read to you in John 20 uh, came to my mind. We find that in the opening verses of this passage of Scripture, of this story, uh, it, it takes place on the evening of Jesus' resurrection. And then it closes out eight days later um, in that particular story. In both cases, the disciples were dealing with probably the most difficult situation uh, that they have ever faced. Their Lord, Jesus, their Savior, died 
upon the cross. And although he promised that he would rise again from the dead, the disciples, they, they dealt with doubt and they dealt with uncertainty. And at this particular moment, it appeared that all their hopes and all their their dreams have been buried with Jesus and, and they were really unsure of their future. The disciples were really struggling with their current situation and struggling with their faith. Yeah. And this is an area that I believe everybody in here can relate to. There are times that we struggle with our situation that we may be in and we struggle with our faith and while I know none of us was there the day that Jesus rose from the grave or even the week following during his, uh, his resurrection, we have struggled with situations in life that have challenged our faith. And I want us to look at this encounter here in these few scriptures and, 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 and try to look at some details here. And uh, The title of this part of Jesus in the Midst is he is in the midst of our fears. He's in the midst of our fears. And we understand here that, that when he comes in, he's dealing with the anxiety of the fearful. Anxiety of the fearful in verses 19 through 23. And, and we, we see that on the evening of the resurrections, here we are. As we read, we find that the disciples were gathered in a room with the door closed because they feared the Jews. Because at that moment, at this particular moment, the disciples, again, they were facing an uncertain future. They knew how, G, uh, uh, how Jesus was, was, uh, was treated by by the Jews and, and by Pilate and they were they were fearful that they may face a similar fate being followers of Jesus. But in their midst, Jesus came in on the scene. And then we discover four things. And that first thing we discover is, is that first of all, Jesus appeared to them in verse 19. It says the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in their midst. And he said, peace be unto you. As the disciples hid in fear, they were locked within a room. And, and here comes Jesus standing in their midst. And again, they were dealing with doubt. They were dealing with so much uncertainty. And even though they've heard that Jesus had risen, they, they had difficulty believing still that Jesus was alive. And in the midst of their fear, in the midst of their doubt, here comes Jesus. It wasn't a dream. It was Jesus. He was standing right there in the midst of their fear. All of a sudden, their hope was received, or their hope was revived, and it was received as Jesus stood among them. Can I tell you that we are never far from Jesus? Although we tend to forget that he is near at all times in every situation, we are never far from him. He is always in our midst, regardless of the struggle, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the situation. He is in the midst. He's in the midst of our fears. Acts chapter 17, verse 27 and the first part of verse 28, it says that they should seek the Lord if happily they may feel, might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. And the first part, uh, first part of verse 28 says, for in him we live and move and have our being. Psalms 145 and verse 18 says, the Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. 
to all that call upon him in truth. Seek the Lord in your time of need. Don't, don't, don't withdraw yourself. It, it, it's strange to me that when, when, when circumstances rise and things begin to get hard and there's difficult times, I'm just I'm confused at the fact that people during that time, instead of trying to get closer to God, they quit coming to church. Yeah. And we know if they quit coming to church, it won't be long they'll be quit praying. If they quit praying, they won't be in the Word of God no more. Even though Jesus is right there in the midst. But in the time of our need, we need to be in church more. In the time of our need, we need to pray more. In the time of our need, we need to fast more. In the time of our need, we need to get into the Word of God more. Because Jesus is standing right there, ready to bring us out. He's always in the midst. So we find first that he appeared to them. Then the second thing he did was he's comforted them. Jesus stood in the midst and he said, peace be unto you. Can you imagine how those disciples must have felt? If they ever need or needed the peace of God, it was right then. It was now. And, and because they were fearful, they were afraid, they were unsure of what their future would hold. So in their moment of greatest need, Jesus, he came in, he comforted them with his abundant peace. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for the peace of the Lord? There have been times, many times, that I have faced an uncertain future with, with, with doubt filling my mind. But Jesus has showed up every time and brought peace to my soul. The problem may have still been there, but Jesus gave me peace. we got to understand that, that there's not a lot of times that the problem will diminish, that we may have to go through that trial, that we may have to go through that valley completely, but understand that Jesus is in the midst. Even when our lives are in turmoil, even when our lives are upside down and doubt begins to creep in, we just need to look to Jesus, that he will calm the storms of our life. Just like we talked about last week with Peter, the storm was raging. He got his eyes off Jesus. He began to seek. But whenever he began to refocus on Jesus, he saw Jesus' hand outstretched. And that's what he's here for tonight. In the midst of your fear, in the midst of your doubt, in the midst of your turmoil, and your upside down situation, Jesus is in the midst. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We seem to want to crawl up in a corner somewhere when things get bad. We seem to want to crawl up in a corner somewhere when things start closing in against us. But I promise you tonight, not through just reading something, but through experience, that if you would reach out to God and you would say, devil, not this time in this doubt, but I'm going to reach out in this turmoil. I'm going to reach out. I may have to go all the way through the valley. I may have to go through struggle after struggle, but I want you to understand, devil, that Jesus is in the midst and his hand is outstretched and I'm going to walk with him and I'm going to hear the words and I'm going to live by peace be unto you. Jesus is in the midst. He appeared to them. He comforted them. And then the third thing he did was he challenged them. In verse number 20 it said, And when he had said, so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. If any of them hadn't yet got the message, any doubt that remained 
was removed as Jesus stepped forth and revealed his hands and his side. It really was Jesus. It wasn't just a ghost, but it really was Jesus. He was alive just as he said. And all that he or all that they had heard and believed was real. Whatever doubt they had in their mind, whatever fear that was in their mind, it was all of a sudden replaced with confidence. And it was replaced with a complete assurance. They were now settled in their faith and they were ready to move forward with the Lord. No matter what you're facing tonight, you can turn that situation around. You can turn that doubt around. You can turn that fear around and you can replace it with the same confidence and the same complete assurance because just as Jesus was speaking to them on that day, he is speaking to us, speaking to us tonight that if you would reach out your hand you can put your hand in my nail scar hands. If you would reach out your hand, you can thrust your hand into my side. I am real. I am alive and I am in your There's nothing any better, nothing any better for a fearful heart than a fresh encounter with Jesus. And can I tell you tonight, it's Wednesday night, but you can have that fresh encounter with Jesus tonight. You don't have to walk out with doubt. You don't have to walk out with confusion. You don't have to walk out with fear, but you can have that fresh encounter with Jesus tonight. He is in our midst. The world, the world is dark, sin is rampant, but we serve a risen Savior. He lives today. He has already conquered all that Satan could muster up. He has already conquered everything that Satan is plotting against you, every evil thing that he's coming against you with. He has already conquered that. And we are made more than conquerors through him. Hear me, church. He is in the midst. We don't have to walk with our head down. We don't have to walk in the mully grubs. We don't have to walk defeated. But he's in our midst. And we can walk in victory. We can walk in total deliverance. We can walk with every step of the way with Jesus in our midst. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is in the midst of every fear. There is no reason for us to live in fear. There is no reason for us to live in doubt. We are more than conquerors in Christ. When times of doubt come, we need to be comforted and we need to consider the cross. When times of doubt come, we need to consider the empty tomb. When times of doubt comes, we need to remember his promises that he will come again. We have no reason to walk around with our heads down. Each and every one of us in here tonight, we belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are his children. There are more blood flowing through our veins. No matter where we go, he is in the midst. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give him a good hand. He's here tonight, just as he was on Sunday. He's here till he'll be here tomorrow, just as he is tonight. He said he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He said he would be the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he brought you through a trial in the past, guess what? He'll bring you through it again. If he brought you through the dark valley in the past, he'll bring you through it again. He is all. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Look at your neighbor and say, we belong to the Lord. I'm a child of the King. I am his child. And whenever he looks at me, he looks at me with googly eyes. When he looks at me, he falls in love over and over and over again with me. He is always in the midst. All we want to do is close ourselves in. All we want to do is close ourselves off. All we want to do is, is get along and begin to sulk in our problems. Don't you know that Jesus is looking down and he's saying that they would just call out to me. If they would just reach out to me. My head is always reached. My ears is always lended to them. I'm waiting to hear. Don't you know he knows what you need but he's waiting for you to that he is the king of kings that he is my savior that he is my deliverer that he is my provider if you're low, low tonight would you look up to him his hand is outstretched grab a hold of it he's in your midst hallelujah 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 He appeared to them. Then he comforted them. Then he challenged them. But the last thing he did, oh, hallelujah, he empowered them. He empowered them. Verse 22 says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. You see, Jesus knew that he would soon ascend. But he also knew he wasn't about to leave them alone. He wasn't going to leave them alone without hope. He wasn't going to leave them alone without divine help. Uh, without divine help. They would soon have the power of God dwelling in them through the Holy Ghost. Amen. Acts 1 and 8 says that ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Don't you understand today that the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you is that same Jesus that stepped in the room that day and took away the fear and took away the doubt. Don't you understand today that you have the power to crush Satan. Don't you understand today that you have the power because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You've got more power than the devil ever dreamed of happening in his life. You've got more power than
We don't we don't have the Lord in person, but we have him in power. I said we don't have him in person, but we have him in power. The more we love him, the more we seek him, the more we serve him, the more power we can enjoy. His power doesn't rest on the unfaithful, but he will remain true. But God has given us the fullness of his power that you and I can enjoy. Grab a brother by the hand. Grab a sister by the hand. No, you don't have to walk in defeat. You don't have to walk with your head down low. I've got the power on the inside of me. And I want to remind you tonight that you've got the power on the inside of you. If you would just understand that Jesus was walking in the midst. We all, we all could agree that there are benefit, benefits associated you, with being committed and surrendered to Christ. Amen. I want you to stand with me right now if you can. Thank you, Jesus. God didn't show me this. It's just, I mean, I know this. I know there's some in here tonight that that's there's so much doubt that's entered in. And you've allowed circumstances to to begin to try to steal your promises. No music tonight or anything like that. But I want to open these altars up. I don't have to pray for you. I don't have to lay hands on you. But if you would be honest with yourself and be honest with God. I know he's real. I know he's alive. But doubt has crept in. I've allowed him to discourage me with circumstance. I wonder tonight if you would come and kneel at these altars. He's in the midst. Never leave you. Never forsake you. Come on. Everyone that's in it, just cry out to the Lord right now. Doesn't matter how it sounds. It doesn't matter what. Just cry out to him right now. He's here with that hand outstretched. Let him pick you up tonight.